Welcome to the GP Lama YouTube channel and today's video is all about the new Cyclic Fly 12 Sport, a combination light and camera which is effectively a purpose-built dash cam for cyclists. And with the latest upgrades, it's becoming quite a capable sports action camera too. Now this is the third generation unit of the Fly 12 range and after a few weeks of use, I'll give you my take on what it's all about. First up, on the technical specifications of this little unit here. Resolution can now record up to 4K resolution at 24 frames a second. You can also record at 1440, 2.7K at 30 frames a second, which is the sweet spot for this little unit here. You've also got 1080 at 30 or 60 frames a second and 720 at 120 frames a second. It has electronic image stabilization, which is optional. All my testing has been done with it on, and you'll see that footage in just a few moments. The storage on this little unit has a micro SD card comes with a 64 gig card. They claim a maximum of 256 will be supported but I believe a 512 will also work however it may be a little slow with indexing a lot of files on there with such a large card. They claim up to a seven hour battery life on this unit but that really does depend on the configuration you choose to go with. More testing and results on that later on in the video. The charging and data interface on this unit is a USB-C port. It has a rear OLED status screen on the back and a status LED for quick view of what's going on. Obviously it has a front light with multiple modes. The waterproof rating is IP56, which according to the IP standards, protected from limited dust ingress, protected from high pressure water jets from any direction. One thing of note is there's no Ant Plus light support for this unit as there was with previous models. It has idle detection, so 15 minutes of inactivity, the thing will turn itself off. It has incident detection, so any more than 30 degrees in this direction, 60 degrees in this direction for more than five seconds. The current video recording and the previous one will be locked and won't be overwritten. Now the scenario there is, let's just say you're involved in an incident, you're separated from your bike, the camera's still turned on, nobody's pressed the buttons to save or lock the footage or even turn the camera off, your bike may be transported somewhere else and always moving, that incident footage will be saved on here and locked away, not overwritten. As in further, it does have the looping recording functionality on by default, meaning that when the SD card fills up, it will overwrite the oldest footage first, but not the locked away footage that's stored elsewhere and not overwritten. This unit will also work with the USB-C cable plugged in to a power bank. On to the pricing just quickly, US 319, Euro 359, 299 pounds and 449 Aussie dollars over on cyclic.com. On to what's in the box and I'll pull up the cyclic website on that because I've already scattered the parts everywhere and can't actually find everything. You obviously get the camera itself, SD card which is a 64 gig card, you get a lanyard and tether but the non-stretchy one is supplied in the box. I've switched over to the previous cyclic stretchy lanyard, I like this much better. Comes with a handlebar mount, GoPro style fin mount adapter which I'm looking for and with the magic of video editing will appear in my hand just here. Again this is the one I've been using always and a USB-C cable. Onto a closer look of the Fly 12 Sport and compared to the Fly 12 CE next to it, same form factor, so the same shape, but just a few small refinements and a smaller unit overall. So the buttons have been changed, two buttons here, three buttons here, mount remains the same, has that quarter turn style mount and you do get the adapter to convert it to a GoPro finned mount, which is very, very handy to have that, but side by side, Similar, but different. Status screen here on the back of the Fly 12 Sport and uh, nothing, just a speaker there on the back of the CE. Uh, battery compartments, the older one, this was USB-C and SD card slot here. On this unit, it has a rubber style um, with the same detail. So USB-C micro SD slot in there and the all important weight of these things. Oh, one thing to note too, and you'll see this later in the video, the size of the light, it's bigger on the old unit than the newer unit. And yes, that means this is brighter on the road. Okay, Fly 12 Sport weight coming in at 150 grams. The new one, the older unit, the Fly 12 CE, 196. And as a comparison, GoPro Hero 10, now this is an action cam, not quite in the same league as these for what they do. Obviously this is a higher quality camera and optics and things like that. This isn't really a safety camera, but people will use them for the same reasons. 152, so 152 versus 150, it's actually lighter than a GoPro. That is a significant improvement over this weighted little hippo here. 
And as per the tech specs, the Flight 12 Sport comes with a 64 gig card that's actually usable. Not a 16 gig card we've seen with some other cameras lately. So that's actually a win right there. A card with enough usable space to be handy. A quick look at the display on the back of the Fly 12 Sport. Uh, there's no SD card in there at the moment. It's a low powered screen, so it's probably gonna show a little flickery there on screen, but you can get a status of the camera while it's in use, and you can flick through a few different modes and things by pressing this button. So format the card, factory reset, serial numbers and things. And if you wanna rotate the camera, press and hold and you can get the orientation set without pulling out the app. Configuration is via the Cyclic Plus mobile app. We'll pull that up here and you'll see that the Fly12S appears to be offline and I can't hit connect. That's because the Fly12S doesn't have a broadcasting mode when it's sleeping, it's turned off. Unlike the Fly12CE shown there on screen, which I can connect to, I'll first need to turn this Fly12S on. then scan for it, and from here we can connect. Okay, so it's recording by default. We'll switch that off for now. Battery 42%, lock files, 5% of the SD card settings is what we're after. Video configuration, 2160, 24 frames a second, that's 4K. 1440 is the sweet spot at 30 frames a second, and there's the other modes listed there too. Stabilization can be on or off, video segment length and also logo and timestamp can be disabled if required. Back on that, light configuration. Here's my preferred light modes, high, low or off. For me, flashing modes or pulse modes have no place on the road. If all the cars or other vehicles on the road drove around with flashing lights, it would be very, very distracting. As a car driver, as well as a cyclist, I find flashing lights very distracting. So the first thing I've done here is removed or disabled all the flash modes. There's also organic mode there, which means that if your Fly 12 Sport happens to order a coffee or any food from a cafe that you're at, it will be all ethically sourced and most likely vegan. Actually, just kidding. It's got something to do with the flashing pattern varies continuously in both intensity and duration designed to hold the attention of other road users while minimizing battery usage. Well, for me, I just want to be seen. I don't want to hold people's attention. So that's why I go high, low, or enable light off mode if I choose not to have the light on. Sound wise, we can have the beep intervals. Well, I turn those off. I don't want the thing beeping. And volume level medium is typically okay. System configuration, incident mode on, idle mode off for the testing that I was doing, sync date and time, and format micro SD card. You can also do that from the menu on the device itself with the little OLED display. And once all configured, that's about it. We hit disconnect and it's just simply pressing the power on and power off at the start and finish of our rides. Okay, finally out on the road for some field tests of this camera to show you what it looks like out on the bike in real world riding scenarios. Now I do have to make note that uploading footage to YouTube is compressed and recompressed and shown in different resolutions. So what you're seeing here isn't exactly a one for one representation. However, it's going to be good enough for what we need to do here. So here we have the Fly 12 Sport in 1440 resolution, so 2.7K or thereabouts in 30 frames a second with electronic stabilization on. And if I was to pause at any point, we can pick out the number plates and detail without much problem whatsoever. So all looking good here. A little further out the road where things become a little bumpier, the Fly 12 holds up relatively well in such a, well, I'd call a visually complex environment here. So all the detail that it has to capture and compress, it's, uh, it's doing quite a good job of it. Not up to GoPro standards, of course, but again, different camera and different purpose, but it's doing pretty well. Pulling up a direct head-to-head -head or side-by-side -side comparison with the older Fly 12 CE on the left and the new Fly 12 Sport on the right, both set to 1080 resolution HD at 60 frames a second. And we can see that over there on the right, the colors are a little bit more vibrant and the detail is a little bit finer on the newer unit. Now, if I was to hit pause right here, we can have a look at the number plates. Now, this isn't about number plate recognition, but number plates are a great thing to use when looking at uh, detail of a camera and what it can capture. And you can see here, obviously over on the right, a little bit more detail, a little bit more easier to read on the newer unit.
Switching over the Fly 12 Sport to its maximum capability, so 4K or 2160p at 24 frames a second. And again, it's pretty obvious that over there on the right, the colors are a little bit brighter, more vibrant. And if I was to hit pause on the car coming up right here, it's very easy to see that the level of detail provided in that higher resolution is has well has a much better chance of capturing number plates or correctly identifying whatever it is that you want to capture. So as expected, the higher resolution provides a lot more detail. However, after using sports cams for so many years at 30 frames or 60 frames, dropping back to 24 frames to get this 4K footage looks a little jumpy to me. But again, I'm looking at this from a different perspective. To get the smoother frame rate, we can switch over to 1440 or 1080. Another side-by-side -side comparison around the lake here in Ballarat. The Fly 12 CE over there on the left, 1080, 60 frames per second, its maximum settings. And the Fly 12 Sport over on the right, set to 1440 resolution at 30 frames a second with stabilization on. What I would call optimal settings for the Fly 12 Sport. Now, pretty much it's a wash between the two. Over there on the left, the Fly 12 CE is smoothing the image out a lot. Over on the right, things are a little bit more grainy, but we're not going to be able to pick the number plates. If I hit pause right here... We're still not going to be able to read that like we can in daylight conditions. So side-by-side -side comparison in uh, low light, uh, about the same, but I really didn't expect too much from this camera or really any camera in such situations. And a quick beam test from both cameras. Fly 12 Sport Light. Fly 12 CE Light. So side by side, you can tell here the Fly 12C, the older camera, had a more broader light and higher powered light than the more focused Fly 12 Sport. On to some storage statistics after a number of rides using different resolutions and frame rates. So 1080, 30 frames a second with stabilization on resulted in 4.62 gigabytes of data recorded per hour onto the micro SD card. 1440 at 30 frames a second with stabilization was around 14 gigabytes of data per hour and 2160 or 4K at 24 frames a second was a little less at 12.11 gigabytes per hour. So if you were wondering if 64 gig is enough, absolutely, you'll get a few hours of recording before it starts to loop back on itself. For the battery benchmarking, I performed three tests in the Llama Lab, all at 1080, 30 frames a second with stabilization on, with the light set to three different modes, that being solid high, solid low, and light off. With the solid high, I was able to get just under four hours of footage recorded. With the light on solid low, it was five hours, 40 minutes and 28 seconds. And with the light off 1080, 30 frames a second with stabilization on, on the bench, I was able to record eight hours, 26 and 55 seconds of footage. One thing of note, with the light on solid high and on solid low, when it reached 25%, that beam became a little lower. So in solid high, it went to low beam mode. And in solid low, when it reached 25% battery capacity left, it went to a low, low beam mode. I didn't perform any flashing light or low beam battery tests, but look at the numbers here. Their estimate of seven hours battery life on pulsing probably wouldn't be too far off, depending on the resolution use, of course. Now to getting the footage off this camera, and there are only two ways you can do this at present. That is with a USB-C cable or to pop the SD card out of the unit and put it into a Mac PC or similar. There's no ability to view, preview, download, take snapshots with the mobile device just yet, which is something that I do with GoPros all the time. I'm out riding the bike, grabbing a few hero shots, and at the end of the ride, I'll connect my mobile to the GoPro, grab a few stills, and upload those to Strava, Instagram, etc. Now that is the purpose of a GoPro, the glam shots, the hero shots, so to speak. This is more a safety slash dash cam. However, with the capabilities of this now and the resolution, people will start to use these as sports action cameras. So I'd love to see that functionality come soon. Now plugging this directly into my MacBook Pro resulted in this error right here. So for the M1 Max MacBook Pro that I was using, I had to pop the SD card every time I needed to grab some footage off this unit. A problem the older Fly 12C unit has was that it caused interference with some cycling computer GPS accuracy, most notably the Element Roam version 1. So here's the Fly 12C causing the GPS accuracy to become, well, less accurate. And when switching the Fly 12C off, things go back to normal. And here's the updated Fly 12 Sport causing, well, less problems for the Rome V1 GPS. 
So there have been some improvements made for the internal shielding of this unit. Doing the same tests with the new Rome V2 with its multi-band GNSS, it appears that it's not affected by the old Fly12CE interference. Alrighty, we've seen the ins and outs of this camera. Now over to my take, or the notes that I've made over the past few weeks when using this camera. The number one thing is it's simple to use. Once configured, you just power it up and ride. You can forget about it. You leave the 64 gig card in there, it will loop over the recordings until the day you need to pull some footage from it, at which point I plug it into the PC or Mac and away I go. The smaller form factor is a plus, there's less bulk than the previous Fly 12 CE and it's effectively the same weight as a GoPro Hero 10. The camera is really good in daylight. Using the 1440 or 2.7K resolution, 30 frames a second stabilized, that was good. Not quite to GoPro standards when it comes to what they do with resolution and hyper smooth and horizon lock, but those cameras are for a different purpose and at a much higher price point. The battery life is good without using the light. As always, I'd love to see more battery life squeezed out of these devices across the board on our bikes. And I've said it multiple times in this video, and I'll say it again, the 64 gig micro SD cards actually usable. It's not 16 gig. Look, the lack of Ant Plus light support isn't ideal. It would be nice to have that integration just simply for the low battery warnings that you'd get on your head unit when this thing gets a little close to being flat. The light on the Fly 12 Sport not being as bright as the CE is another downside as well, but I guess this is a compromise for having a smaller unit and getting more battery life out of it. The design of the light is to be seen rather than to see at night. And that low light performance, well, like most cameras, isn't ideal. And finally today, to touch on something that comes up with Cyclic quite often is the customer support experience. I've personally had a run-in, I guess you would call it, with customer support not too long ago that left me feeling a little, well, uneasy about the whole situation. Now, Cyclic tell me they've made a lot of changes in regard to this in recent times. That's both with staffing and procedure. So let's see how they go in supporting this new unit when people need help. Let's keep an eye on those reviews when they start rolling in. Anyhow, that's a wrap. The Fly 12 Sport Action Camera, a device that actually does what's written on the box. And that makes me happy. All right, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.